Hey Toyota fans, I had a comment on my 1985 Toyota review video a while back that deserves its own video. Someone said, so this truck sucks from what you said is you spent thousands of dollars on repairs. That got me thinking, how much have I spent on my truck? It's time for a rundown of what I paid for the truck, what mods it had when I already bought it, and how much I put into it over the last 10 years. Let's start in late 2010. For a couple of years, I had been looking into getting an 84 to 95 Toyota pickup truck four wheel drive uh, as a daily driver. But everything in my price range of like 2000 bucks was usually pretty rusty. Then I saw a 1985 extra cab four x four on eBay classifieds. And the seller wasn't even five miles from my house. This truck was listed for $3,200 and I'm pretty sure it had more in that in just aftermarket parts, so I wasted no time buying it. Plus, the seller had already repaired the rear of the frame by cutting and replacing metal, not patching, and he coated the whole thing with POR15. The body and bed were pretty clean for an Ohio Toyota with 165,000 miles. So here's the aftermarket parts that came on the truck. 35 by 12 and a half inch, Dick Peck Mud Country tires with less than 2,000 miles. Those run $215 a piece times four, that's 860 bucks. And those run Krager D Window steel wheels, which run 300 bucks for a set of four. It had 529 Yukon gears in the axles, that's 279 times two, which comes to 558 bucks. It had an IFS rear axle from an 88 truck with an ARB air locker and compressor. That ARB setup alone is like $1,100. The front axle had an Aussie locker, another 300 bucks. The front axle also had a sky widening kit with IFS hubs. These kits have been discontinued for a while now, but I did find a kit on eBay for 350 bucks. Land Cruiser FJ60 vented front rotors, and those are 60 bucks at parts stores. And 1995 Forerunner V6 calipers. I know those are 200 bucks for both at AutoZone because I had to replace them a couple years after I owned the truck. It had a front range off-road twin stick, which runs $189, Pro Comp four inch suspension lift, $650, a two inch four crawler body lift on the cab, 60 bucks, and a homemade lift kit on the bed with two inch square stock. All that adds up to $4,627 in just the aftermarket parts. This guy put a lot of money and time into this truck and just wheeled it once in a while and he just didn't have time for it anymore. And now it was my new daily driver for three grand. I know that's hard to believe. Back in 2010, when I bought this 85, these weren't highly sought after trucks like they are today. It was just a 25 year old truck at its lowest point of depreciation. Back then a stock four wheel drive Toyota truck would sell for two, maybe three grand for a clean example. Like how times have changed, right? What a difference a decade can make. So without the mods, this would have been about a $2,000 truck at the time. It wasn't pretty close up. The paint was dull and faded. It had dings and scratches. The bed was spray painted red. And although cleaner than most around here, the bed did start to have some rust bubbles along the seam. But those aftermarket parts made this deal a steal. So I'm $3,000 into the truck and it's already built to go just about anywhere off-road and I did exactly that while using it as my daily driver. Well, six months later after a Memorial Day weekend Wellsville trip, the engine was knocking. Oh, and sections of the frame that the previous owner had repaired were both rusting through on the inner sides of the frame rails. He must have used some thin sheet metal. Here's where it all begins. Rather than spend time and money to rebuild the 22R engine, I found a rusty 1986 22R 4x4 for 500 bucks with only 106,000 miles. It had an almost new clutch too. I sold the rest of the truck and made well over a grand, so the engine and clutch ended up being free. I already had a MIG welder, so I spent about 50 bucks on materials to repair the frame myself using thicker 3 16 inch steel this time. A few months later, I came across an 87 4x4 with a rusty frame and cab with a mint interior and drivetrain, but it also had a fiberglass bed. 
The rust bubbles on the metal bed of my 85 were starting to get worse after daily driving through winter. So I bought the 87 for a thousand bucks and again made well over a grand selling the rest of the truck and kept the fiberglass bed for my 85. To give you an idea of how cheap the market was 10 years ago, both the 86 and 87 parts truck had mint crack free dashes. I don't even think I got a hundred bucks for each of those dash pads. The parts were so cheap back then. I was practically giving this stuff away on I Hate Mud. But yeah, I got the fiberglass bed for free basically. Plus, I sold my metal OEM bed for 400 bucks. So now, I had some funds to put into my truck. I wanted an inclinometer, but those were like 150 bucks at the time. So I bought one out of a four wheel drive to sell for 50 bucks and modified it to work on my Yoda dash. I kept the IFS steering box from the 86 parts truck and spent 450 bucks on a trail gear high steer kit. Mind you, this beast was my daily driver and I commuted over 100 miles a day for work. So I picked up a set of OEM alloy wheels on Craigslist for 100 bucks and bought a new set of BFG 33 by 10 and a half inch all terrain tires for about 800 bucks after mounting and balancing. So I put about 1500 bucks into the truck with the frame repair, the high steer, the inclinometer and the OEM wheels and all-terrain tires. On top of the three grand I already paid for the truck for a total of $4,500 out of my pocket. The motor, clutch, and fiberglass bed ended up costing me nothing. Oh, and I kept the 35s to swap on for off-roading. The truck was perfect for me by this point. Kind of an off-road sleeper with the faded red paint up front and the mismatched brighter red on the fiberglass bed. Nobody looked twice at it unless they knew what Yodas were capable of. But that was about the change. I came across a once in a lifetime opportunity to have my truck restored for free. That's right, zero dollars through the company I used to work for. It's a long story, so let me know if you want to hear it and I'll explain it all in a separate video. So along with the free body work and paint job, I also got a new fender, a new hood, antenna, bed liner, and a set of fuel Anza wheels, which I painted all for free. When it was done, I had a gnarly off-road truck that now looked like a show truck. It got attention everywhere from everyone. But I still take it off-road once in a while, I just don't rub it on trees anymore. So that was the first five years I owned the truck. I've done some minor things to it since then, mostly maintenance that you've seen in how-to videos. A radiator was about 100 bucks. New V6 4Runner calipers I mentioned earlier were 200 bucks. A K&N air filter was like 50 bucks. Rear axle bearings and oil seals were 40. Rear pinion seal was 10. Drive shaft carrier bearing was 20. I got a used left B pillar trim for 35. Rear shoes were 20. Transfer case oil seal was 10. Forerunner V6 master cylinder was I think 70. Valve cover gasket 20. LCE exhaust studs were 20. I put a universal receiver on it for towing. That was 25. The ridiculous 14 inch drop hitch was $134. The LED headlights I ended up getting for free through a YouTube collaboration. So add about $750 for all those, and that's not including filters and fluids. So that brings the grand total of what I have spent on the truck to $5,750. Let's just make it six grand to account for uh, fluids and filters and any other maintenance that I forgot about. So getting back to the original question, no. I did not spend thousands of dollars on repairs. They were free because I did them all myself. I spent about $3,000 on parts and maintenance and upgrades over the last 10 years. And that only comes out to 300 bucks a year to keep an old 4x4 truck on the road. That's why I love these old Toyotas. And also why I added a 94 Land Cruiser to my garage this year. It's 26 years old and I bought it at its lowest point of depreciation just like my 85 pickup. I have no problem putting time and money into a vehicle that's only going to go up in value because they just don't make them like they used to. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them and uh, thanks for watching. I'll be delivering more Toyota content right here in 2021. Hey Toyota fans, I had a comment on my 1980. <laughs> Come on, dude. I'm like one second into the video and you're already all up in my lap. Get down there. Two inch four crawler body. Uh, two inch. 
a two inch four crawler lift, a two inch four crawler lift kit on the cab, a two inch four crawler body lift on the cab, 60 bucks.